Hey, my name is Andrew Connell, and in this brief video, I'm gonna show you how to do something with Git. Um, I'm gonna show you how to take multiple commits and compress them down into a single commit. Uh, I find this to be useful, so when you submit like a pull request uh, to another repository, uh, sometimes they come back and have some feedback for you and want you to change some stuff, or you've got a couple little commits that are different typos. Um, that are fixing things, little commits that address individual typos, and we don't want to muddy up um, all of our commit history and our git history with those different uh, individual commits. So what I'm going to do is we're going to create uh, five individual commits, and we're going to compress um, some of those down into uh, one single commit. So I'm going to start by first creating a folder and initializing the a git repository inside that folder. So here we are, we got our uh, repository initialized. Now I'm going to create uh, five individual commits, and so I'm just going to throw a file into each one of those commits uh, individually and name my commits uh, A, B, C, D, and E. Okay, so now we're set here with uh, five commits, and we can see that if I just do a git log, and I can see a list of all my commits. I see A, B, C, D, and E. I'm in here in an interactive prompt uh, inside of my terminal window. Actually, I'm in the Vim editor. Uh, to get out of this, I can just hit Q, or I can hit the uh, colon, and you see there at the bottom, uh, I'm kind of waiting for a prompt, and then I can hit Q to get out of that. Uh, another way I can look at my log is by saying uh, git log one line and it will list out all my commits, and they're going in, in a sense, reverse order. So the very first commit is at the bottom, that's A, and the very mo most recent commit is E. So the head is currently pointing to E, and what I wanna do is I wanna merge E, D, and C into my B commit. So the way I'm gonna do that is I need to go into an interactive uh, prompt for rebasing. So what I'm gonna say is, let me clear this out, go to the top, and I'm gonna say, git rebase dash i and because what I want is I want to go uh, from um, uh, b, c, d, and e are going to merge into one so what I want to do is I want to go back in time and say I want to look at go from the current head back in time over the last four uh, commits so what is that going to do that's going to open up here we see all the commits now notice they're they're issued in reverse order here they're issued in as b, c, d, and e uh, now, one thing you want to make sure of is that um, I've got Sublime set as my editor. Um, this is important um, because uh, I want to, it makes it easier for me to issue the commands and kind of modify my changes here. Um, there is a, a thing that you want to be that you want to be careful of is that sometimes when you run into this rebasing, uh, interactive rebasing, is that the Git will immediately or Sublime does not wait to give control back to the terminal window. Uh, or back to Git, and so it just takes the changes that I've made here and hands it back. Um, that's usually the case when you have a uh, when you don't tell Sublime to wait. And so one of the things you would definitely want to take a look at uh, is running a command. I'm going to open a command window real quick. Is doing something like this. You would say, uh, and we'll just we'll go to a different. Let's back out of here. Uh, I could do something like git config global core editor and I would say sublime dash n dash w um, that's going to tell sublime to uh, wait uh, for this file to be finished okay so that's how I'm that's how you see here this terminal window is kind of waiting around all right so what do I want to do I want to go through and I want to I want to squash down um, e d and c into b so I want to pick b meaning I want to use that commit um, but then I want to come over here and I'm going to want to change these other guys, C, D, and E. Now there's different ways you can do it. You can either use a squash, which you see listed down here. That's going to preserve all of the comments uh, in the commits. Or you can do a fix up. And what I really like when I do this, I generally want to ignore the fact that there was ever a commit. So the net result is I want this to be uh, completely cleaned up. And so I'll just type in an F for each one of these 
to clean each one of these up and then I'll leave the B um, as is. Now I would normally want to go through and change B. Uh, I could I have an option here to change the commit message for B uh, if I want to. So let's say for example um, I'll come over here and say let's reword B to something like um, B changed. All right. Um, and we're going to change that in a minute. I'll show you another way to do it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to save this and then I'm going to quit out of Sublime and you'll see that it's going through and it's going to make all my changes. So here's offering me to change my uh, commit message. So I'll just say changed, save that and get out. And it just made all my changes here. So let's see what, we, what we're left with. Um, I'm still left with all the files right here. I've got uh, first, second, third, fourth, and fifth all listed here. A little bit easier if I do that. We'll see it if I do that. Uh, how about all my different commits? Well, let's do the whole git log one line. And you see there, and I've got, just got two commits. I've just merged those two together. That's exactly what I wanted. Um, let's say, for example, I want to change that, that commit message on B. I don't want it to look like that. So what I can do with that is I can say git commit because I'm currently on the last commit. I'll say let's amend, or I'm, I'm currently on the, uh, the heads pointing to it. I want to amend the last commit. I'm going to throw an E on the end of this to say let's edit the last commit. If I type in amend correctly. And you see here it opens up this interactive prompt again for me to change this. So I could say B is actually B through E now. And when I save that and close it, it'll make that same change to my log message. So when I look at it, you can see now the new log message sitting there.